Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at using the bevel profile modifier to get a little more complex and flexible bevel uh, out of our splines. So you can see here I have a logo uh, which is an editable spline, and you could either make this in 3ds Max or you could import it from something like Illustrator, which is what I did. And in order to bevel this, you can use a few different modifiers. We could use the extrude modifier, uh, we could use just uh, the regular bevel, and we also have bevel profile, which is what we're going to look at today. With bevel profile, we actually need two pieces. You need the spline that you're going to bevel, and you need the actual profile shape that it's going to make. So this is similar to making like a lathe. I'm going to go in here, and we're going to create that profile with a spline that is a line. And I usually like to start out with just a basic, quick, three-stage bevel like this. So this would be the profile if we're you know, looking down in the top view, which we are. So now that we have these two pieces, we'll go and select our logo, go over into the Modify panel, and we're going to choose Bevel Profile. Now Bevel Profile is looking for that spline, so you need to choose Pick Profile, and click on that profile. And you'll see right away you get a nice bevel of your object with three different levels. If we made this in the top view and you kind of line these up, you should be able to see exactly how this lines up with whatever you're beveling. It's not all the time that you have these perfectly aligned, so sometimes you'll need to rotate this. I recommend using angle snap and put it into place so that you can really see how this is affecting your profile. Now one of the nice things about Bevel Profile is this is a live link between the modifier which creates geometry and the spline here. So if I go in to sub-object vertex of this spline, and I'll just change this view to perspective so we can get a better view of our profile, you can see that we can adjust any of these points to be a little bit larger, a little wider, and give us a different profile. So let's say that this one was a little too deep. We could select both of these and shorten it some. And we could also uh, maybe bring it in a little bit closer if we wanted to in the back. And you can also adjust the type of vertices we have here. So if I wanted to make this a bezier, I can adjust it to make it a bezier. Now you can see that back corner is rounded. So if I go over here, you can see we have a nice rounded back corner that is beveled. So that's a pretty nice uh, thing to do. And you're able to kind of mix and match this. So you know some vertices may be smooth and some may be that nice hard bevel. The other thing I like about this is the ability to add more points and more complexity to your bevel. To do this, we just need to go over and click on Refine here. And then we can zoom in and make a few more points. So let's say we make maybe four more points over here. And I can take this edge out and I can move it out so that we get a little extra bevel happening on that edge. You can also inset this in, so I'll push that in, so we get a nice inset there. And really by working this way, even though we're working on you know a really pretty basic logo in this sense, you can get some pretty interesting architectural details to things that you wanted to bevel all the way around and uh, other things happening with bevels, because you can add as much detail as you want. I'm just going to delete those two pieces. Another thing that I find pretty interesting is the ability to add an inner bevel. So if I go and start to pull this back, you can see that it starts to push that bevel inside. So we get this kind of nice inner bevel going on here. And I can add a couple of points to that so that I have an inner bevel on the inside and that comes up to a nice closed edge here. So I get a nice rim like so, and then I get that inner bevel which I can make as wide as I want. So we'll just make it maybe that wide and maybe not quite as deep. And you can see you get a nice inner bevel out of this. So if I take a look at my camera, as this comes around, I have a nice rim and edge to play with there. And maybe once I go to the back, I could add something to the back as well. So maybe on the back that's a good place to add one of those small bump details. So I can add something like that so that just we get a little edge as we kind of come over on the back side of this too. 
These bevels are great for catching light and adding detail to whatever sort of logos and text you may have in uh, motion graphics or other project. I'll just quickly make some text to kind of show you how this would work there. We'll go over and create a quick spline text and I'll do this in the front view. So there we go there. Text is named Max and we'll pick a interesting, maybe kind of fat font for that. And then we can go and just grab this bevel profile, which already has that profile picked, and just kind of drag it over to there. And you see that we get this text uh, with that same bevel with, you know, the one inner bevel here, and then that kind of backside bevel there. So you can apply this to all sorts of different things. And you can even save out, you know, different profiles that you may like. So um, it may be advantageous to copy a bunch of profiles that are kind of nifty and you want to use a bit and uh, save those out in a max file. You can merge those in and size them appropriately and then use them kind of as templates. So that's a little bit about Bevel Profile. Uh, hopefully that helps you in your future projects. Thanks a bunch.